Hello and welcome to Catherine's Garden. It's at this time of year when you really can appreciate a cold drink of water. Water is so good for the body. It hydrates you and it fills you with the energy that you need. Sometimes you're not hungry but you're just thirsty and I know that I'm just thirsty for this garden and the beauty of the garden and just as my garden is a well watered garden I gotta make sure that I'm well watered too <laughs> that's why I got my bottle of water out here with me Hello and welcome to Catherine's Garden. It's a hot summer day and it's the first day of summer, June 20, 2020. And yes, you can see the sweat beads on my forehead because I have been dragging the holes around the garden and wetting the garden so that it won't all shrivel up and fade away. And you know there's a lot of summer left, especially because today is the first day. While I am watering the grass and the garden, I have to make sure that I stay hydrated too. There's nothing like a cold bottle of water on a hot summer day, especially the first day of summer. It's a very hot day today, so I have the water on. It would be a shame if everything just shriveled up because of the heat. So I decided that my plants are worth it and I'm going to give them what they need and water it is. So, they're getting plenty of it. It has been very dry here and it doesn't seem like there's any rain in sight. Hopefully we'll have a thunderstorm soon so that the roots can get a good deep soak. One of the things that I'm happy about being in this garden is that there are a lot of trees and it allows the garden to be shaded part of the day. Take a look at my hydrangea. You can see what the heat has done to it. I gave it a good soak and hopefully it will rebound just as healthy as before. I'm sure it will. The rest of the garden is looking okay because I continue to water it regularly. But especially on these hot days, you just have to give it that extra push, that extra dose of TLC that it could know that it's a well-watered garden. I decided to cut myself a special bouquet I use the Eden Climbing Rose and also some Euonymus from my front shrubs. I think it came out pretty nice here. Because of the heat, I don't think they're going to last that long. so. I think I just need to continue just to enjoy them like this and try something new and different with the roses.
So the garden is looking just beautiful for the first day of summer. And um, I say, welcome summer, welcome summer. I really like how this um, plant right here has uh, just bloomed. It's just so pretty. It looks really, really nice. And it's really helping this bed. Uh, these are alliums. And um, I don't remember the name of them. I will have to check it out. When they open up, I'll let you know. And then here is a hukura. A hukura. And these are the bells, the hukura color. The bells on the hukura. So that's going to be really interesting. To see how all of this changes. I love this bed. But I'm going to thin it out a little bit more. But in the meantime, I'm enjoying its fullness. I just want to show you this is still be beautiful. It's one of the first distilleries to open up in the garden. And I really like that. And back here I have other hydrangeas. And we're gonna see what happens in this. Um, section. As far as the stillbies, I was trying to create, I mean hydrangeas, I was trying to create a row of hydrangeas and this is one of the plants that I put here and it is blooming which is fantastic. another one this beautiful plant is elegance beautiful host yeah, so back here are my hydrangeas and uh, they're doing really well so I love this row so this back veggie garden is doing very well. Actually, it's not back, it's side garden. Veggie garden is doing very, very well here. The tomato plants are getting larger, they're growing. And look at my cucumbers. Just in such a short time. Look how tall they've gotten. The cabbages are there. Kale. Everything is just getting larger and larger. Soon I'm going to start harvesting some of these veg vegetables. I love the cabbage leaves in smoothies and I know that you can eat them. And I might as well enjoy them before the bugs just eat all of them up. And the celery is getting larger too. Do you notice that? The celery? And then here I have my cannas. Finally, they're coming out of the pot. And that's the begonia. With the heat of summer, we're going to see a lot more plants. And I love the petunia. The 
I don't know, I think those teacups look good there in the middle of the mint because that's what I use the mint for, for tea. So I guess it's appropriate. It's just going to be a hot day today. And my plants are going to love it. The good thing about where I'm located, um, it's not going to be too hot for the plants because of the fact that we're uh, surrounded by trees. So that my garden is a cool and it's not too overwhelming. Later on, I can come and sit out on the porch or deck and enjoy the warmth of the summer breeze. Here you can see that the daylilies are about to open up. And yeah, they are next. All of the lilies, the daylilies, the lilies, they're next in the garden. But as you know, I love the roses. <laughs> Today is the first day of summer, by the way. Today is June 20th, 2020. The first day of summer. And it is showing its face because we are going to get some really hot temperatures happening. And summer is letting us know that it's here. Now this is another hydrangea. This is bridal bouquet. And it's a white hydrangea. And then later on, it will turn to a pale baby blue color. But it's nice, and I like it shoring up this corner. I'm so happy to have hydrangea blossoms. You're going to hear me talk about them a lot. It's just so beautiful. I think my... I have a lot of favorite plants, but I do love the roses and the hydrangeas and I love the mop head hydrangeas I'm going to try and get me some of the other kind as well um, just to try them out and put them in the garden but I really do love the hydrangeas now over here you can see the grass is growing in here and I love how full this garden is looking this year. The white variegated grass. It's a thug, but it's beautiful. I love it still. You just have to tame it. The tomatoes are starting to fruit here. I believe these are um, 100s. I think they are small cherry-like tomatoes. And they are starting to develop their fruit. That's good. I can't wait to bite my first tomato. <laughs> Well, the neighbors are up and they're cutting their grass. But check out this um, a still bee. 
It's starting to open up with its blooms. That's nice. And then this is a Gerba Daisy plant. Things are doing really well here on this side here. You can see the impatience getting larger. And it's just, just beautiful. The kale and the cabbage are growing really well now. It seems like they picked up. And I like this color of cabbage. It reminds me of the same color as the um, pasta that I just showed you. The fruit on this Asian pear tree getting larger. They didn't flower as much as it did last year, but um, I'm gonna have a few fruit, hopefully, if they hang on in there. <laughs> well, here we have it, my hydrangea. And yes, it is Nico Blue. Endless summer hydrangea. And there are blossoms all over the shrub. I'm just so happy about this. They start off a light color and then they turn into a deep blue. But I, I especially like this shade. It's soft and it's gentle. It's almost like a baby boy color. Check out this. I love these hostas. I don't know the name of them. I wasn't paying attention to keeping the names when I purchased this hosta, which was a good eight years ago or so. Uh, but I love the flowers on this because they're not too high and um, it's just perfect. I love the shade of the, you know, the color of the flower. Uh, most of the hostas in the garden, it's more of a lavender color, but this one is more of a white. And I think I'm going to divide them out and put more here in this area. Because I really, really love this hosta. And they look good with the um, amenities. Look at the little white flowers. Really pretty. I planted some potatoes here last year and I didn't dig them up. So now the potatoes are just spreading this whole corner here. It will be amazing to see what happens <laughs> when I dig them up and to see how many potatoes I'll be able to harvest. I also planted potatoes 
in this container here. I don't know, something keeps knocking it over. I didn't hill it up because it gets a lot of shade here and not a lot of sun. So I'm hoping that everything will go well. It's going to be a very hot day today. So everyone is up trying to get their work done now before the heat comes on. So I planted my dahlias here and they are doing well. There's something eating them so I've had to spray them but they look like they're recovering and the the lilies my Casablanca lilies are getting taller and gaining blooms little buds I believe that these are either the stargazer lilies or the Casablanca lilies that I just bought from Costco's. So we'll have to wait and see what happens if it is which one. Can you guess? I think it may be the star grazer. I think they're a little earlier, but we shall see. I like this view. Early in the morning. The vegetables are doing really well in this corner. There's something about this soil that just seems to cause them to grow so vigorously. And I'm really pleased at how the eggplants are doing well. They even look like they're gaining a flower on them, which is so fantastic. This garden is continually developing. I added a trellis for the cucumbers and the cabbages are growing. I put some spray on them to help to remove the bugs or stop the bugs from eating them and also added some marigold plants here, hoping that that will help in this section. But this is the new addition. So I've tied up the cucumbers and um, I've propped up the tomato plants. The tomatoes have a lot of flowers on them. So we will soon be having tomatoes. Everything is just growing and it is very exciting to see. We created this little space here for the nasturtiums and also for the sweet peppers. The sweet peppers suffered a little bit during the cold snap, but they're coming back again. And also here's the basil. Such a, actually beginning to flower kind of small, but we'll see what happens. Now my urban cottage garden is starting to really bloom and grow. And you can see the day lilies here. These are Stella Deora day lilies, and they only bloom for the day, each blossom opens up in the morning and then it withers away so you have to enjoy them when they come out in the morning because you're only going to see them for that particular day i had just one container of day lilies and i kept dividing them and it created this uh, row of 
daylilies over time. I believe it took me about three years to do this. It does add a very nice pop of color at this time. These are my dianthus and they come back as a perennial. The only problem is that after a while, after a couple of seasons, they disappear. But for right now, they are looking spectacular and adding such brightness. And I like the fact that they actually match the roses, the color of the knockout roses back there. I planted these coleus. It's called Whiskey Mosaic. They struggled earlier when there was a cold snap. They had died back, but I'm so glad to see them coming back and reviving. Uh, these are peppers. This is sedum. And my kale has gotten larger. There's something biting on the kale, so I'm going to have to spray it. But they look healthy and nice this morning. I also wanted to show you what has happened to the alliums here. These are get gladiator alliums. And I really like how they're fading. Uh, the color is actually blending in nicely with the daylilies. This is a cosmos that I grew from seed. And these zinnias are getting larger and larger by the moment. You see the zinnia plants? That was just from a box, a dollar box from the Dollar Tree store of zinnias. And I'm going to uh, dig them up and put them around the garden. The tomatoes are starting to grow, which is really nice to see. And my um, zucchinis are starting to flower. I think there are blossoms on every single one of them. Tomatoes. I can see a little tomato. So this vegetable section is doing very well. My urban cottage garden. Roses are hanging in there. I love these little ground cover roses and they are so dainty. But they fill this area here in the front and they've just spread out here. You'll see soon see a lot of buds flowers well there are a lot of buds but you will see a lot of flowers in a couple of days
this is the front bed and I just planted some peppers nasturtiums I didn't plant the watermelon here I'm thinking of doing it again but I did plant this squash plant here at least I think it's a squash if it's not a squash then it's a pumpkin I'm hoping that it will be able to trail and um, just grow and be happy I also um, see this this is bindweed you have to continue to pull it up otherwise it will just take over and these other weeds as well I did have the tulips planted here, so what I've been doing is just pulling out the spent tulip leaves, uh, and that has really helped a lot, as you can see here. This is basil. It's amazing that some of the pepper plants have grown so much bigger than others. I mean, they're right next to one another. And I'm wondering, well, why is one larger than the other? But that's just the way things are. Even with the nasturtium, look at this one. This is small, but yet this is very large. I don't know. Location, location, location. Happy first day of summer, and I hope that you're staying hydrated. Remember, water is good for you, too. Well, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and also remember to like, share, and subscribe. Remember that you are a beautiful, beautiful garden. So, see you next time in Catherine's Garden. Bye.